Welcome to lesson 12a, Capture Velocity. We're still talking about hoods. Today we're going to talk about something called capture velocity. And of course, I'll do an example problem. It's a way to show us how to choose a hood flow rate for a given kind of hood and a given type of activity that you're doing, like welding or painting or something. We'll define capture velocity first of all. It's actually the magnitude of velocity, so it's really a speed, but people don't distinguish properly between velocity and speed. But it's the required magnitude of velocity to capture a contaminant particle. We're talking about particles here. These also include little droplets, so paint droplets or welding fumes, which are not solid particles, they're liquid, but they're still called particles. Here's a quick procedure. We use tables, and there's one given in the book, table 6.1, to specify the capture velocity for some kind of activity. So this is the activity. We just give a few of them here, welding or spray painting or grinding, etc. And then there's a range of capture velocities for that activity. These are in feet per minute, so make sure you check your units. These activities determine how much the capture velocity has to be in order to capture these things. There's a range, the lower value and the upper value are determined by these criteria. If you have low room movement of the air, low toxicity, et cetera, as you can see there, we use the lower value. If you have lots of room air mixing going on, lots of contaminants of high toxicity, et cetera, you use the high value. And you can see the range is pretty large here. This is the VC here. We set U, the actual speed to that, at the location of interest. So it goes back to what we've learned before. Use the isopleth contour plots or equations when they're appropriate if you're on the center line from the previous lectures to calculate U over U face. And then we calculate U face and then we calculate Q hood, the flow rate through the hood. The last three steps in this procedure are basically the same as what we've already done. It's best learned by example. So let's do an example that is pretty typical, where you have, in this case, a flanged round inlet. We're using it to capture overspray particles from spray painting. The hood inlet face is ground, it has a flange. And we're looking at particles of concern at this point, this red X, which is given by an X and an R value. And we want to calculate the range of required volume flow rate through the hood in units of CFM. I'm going to follow the above procedure. And so the first thing I do is step one, and that is to look at table 6.1 to get the range of VC. This is spray painting. So our VC is 200 to 500 feet per minute. So that's all there is to it. Step two is set the range of required U to this range of VC. Just set U equal VC. If you were using the lower value, you'd set it to that. If you were using the upper value, you'd set it to that. Sometimes we just use an average in between. In this case, I asked you for a range. So the range would be the same, 200 to 500 feet per minute. Step three is to calculate U over U face. So you pick the appropriate figure. Remember, we had figures like this 6.10. This is the one with the flange round inlet. So we use this. And since we're off the center line, we have to use the chart here instead of the equation for the center line. In this case, X over D was given as 1.0 and R over D 0.5. X over D of 1.0, we go up, and R over D of 0.5, you go over, and that intersects almost exactly on this line, which is the 7.5% isopleth, therefore U over U face, which is what we're plotting here, these isopleths, is 7.5% or 0.075. Step four is calculate the range of U face. U over U face is equal to 0.075, from which U face is U over 0.075, just solving for U face. U face is equal to 2666.7 feet per minute, 26666.7 feet per minute. And then finally, calculate the range of Q hood. So you know how to do this already from previous examples. It's just Q hood is equal to U face times A face. A face is pi d squared over 4. So let's do the lower and upper limits. I'll use the lower value. And that gives me 5636 CFM. And then you repeat for the upper limit. That gives us about 14090 CFM. So my final answer 
since I asked for a range, is 5,600. I'm rounding to two digits here to 14,000. Which of these are you closer to the lower value or the upper value? Well, you go back to the table. If there's very few room movements and so you can capture these easily, they're low toxicity, etc., you'd use the lower values if you're lots of bad stuff going on, lots of room air movement, etc., high toxicity, you use the upper limit. Comments. There's a pretty large range, 5,600 to 14,000. That's a factor of more than two. That does not seem to be very accurate, sir. You're right about that, Sean. I'll just say this is not rocket science. It's just designed to give you a ballpark. It's kind of like emission factors. You just want to get some estimate. This is actually pretty big. That affects your room. Most kitchen ones are like 400 CFM, so this is actually quite a bit. Number two, there's a fundamental problem with capture velocity, namely that it's not really a velocity. VC is a speed, not a velocity. And I don't mean that the problem is just with the name. It's, it's really not a good name. They should have called it capture speed. But it does not tell you anything about the direction, only the magnitude. And the direction is the importance. So if I have a hood with some cue that I'm sucking out here through the hood, of course, I have flow coming in from all around because of the candle effect. And I'm talking about a particle that's at some location. So say the particle's right here. Well, is it moving like this? Is it moving like this? Is it moving like that? Is it moving like that? So there's some particle velocity, VP we'll call it, that can be moving anywhere, any of these directions. And so how can you say that you just have one capture velocity to capture it? It should be obvious that it's a lot easier to capture a particle that happens to be moving towards the face than one that is moving away from the face. So these capture velocities basically take the worst case scenario. So in other words, it's particles moving in the opposite direction of the air coming into the hood. So this is a conservative number. So VC is a conservative value. We're saying in this case for, say, you had nice room conditions and low toxicity, you would say 5,600 CFM. That's only for a particle that happens to be moving away in the exact opposite direction of the flow. It may not be if you're painting or welding or something, you may have particles flying around. It may not always be going away, obviously. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos.